Asadids. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be working on the front of the 92 F1 build. If you guys noticed in the last video from our desert trip, the front of the truck was pretty soft after we tuned with Sunny. So what we're gonna be doing today is I've already gotten the coilovers removed and I took them into my work at Down South Motorsports. Right now, we're gonna head back over there. We're gonna pull the coilovers apart. I'm gonna spec out the valving inside of them and kind of show you guys how those internal bypass coilovers work and all the different zones that you can you can tune inside of them. We're also gonna be pulling apart the compression adjuster, seeing what uh, valve stack is in there, and we're probably gonna be making changes to the actual compression adjuster on the reservoir as well. So I'll kind of go over all that stuff with you guys um, and just show you how those shocks work. A little cold start video. right here yesterday I went ahead already and got the lower springs taken off of them so today I could come in and just get these things apart and start specking everything out so the first thing we're gonna do is let the nitrogen out of them and then there's three screws right here that hold the dust cap on we're gonna go ahead and get those off and then get the snap ring out that's underneath here and then be able to get the shaft and valve body out of the shock itself and then we can go ahead and get this upper spring off because this kind of slider right here is held on by this dust cap. So you have to pull the shock apart to be able to get these upper springs off. So we'll get that off, drain the oil, and then we can go ahead and start getting the hose uh, disassembled, getting that adjuster apart so we can figure out the valving inside of there. But the first part is getting this valve body out. So we'll go ahead and do that right now, and then we'll start specking out the valving inside of here. So you got the valve body out of the shock and kind of how this works is you have your main nut that gets torqued to a certain spec per the shock. You have a spacer, you have your rebound shim stack, you have the compression side of the piston. There's a wear band that goes on the piston itself. And then you have your compression stack and the rebound side of the piston down here. And then this right here is specific to the internal bypass coilovers. This is your main valving that the shock actually rides on. And then this, instead of being your main piston like in a normal coilover, this will be just your bump stop zone. So it's kind of backwards a little bit, but there is a hole in the shaft right here. This is part of the internal bypass. There's a hole in the shaft that a pin inside of the shock body that's down here that comes off the top cap, it sticks up. The, sh the pin actually goes into that shaft, into this hole, and that is what gives you your bump zone and that's what this will end up riding on. What I can do now, since we have that valve body out of there, you can go ahead and get this off. Get your spring divider off with the upper spring. And then I can go ahead and dump the oil that's in here into a container, and then we can see how dirty it is. It's probably, doesn't look too bad, it's still really clear. I mean, these shocks don't have very many miles on them, so they shouldn't be too bad, but We'll go ahead and get that dumped so I can start pulling this hose apart and then we'll get back to specking all this out. I'll pull this apart and spec all of it out and kind of lay it out so you guys can see what's going on with all the shim stacks. Since this hose is in a uh, specific location just like with any shock, I need to go ahead and mark where this fitting actually sits on this reservoir so when I put it back together everything's clocked exactly how it needs to be because this adjuster itself has its own shim stack and you can change the thickness of the shims inside of there to have this compression adjuster act differently and have a lot more um, progression per click because what was happening is we maxed these compression adjusters out in the desert and that was all that this shock had so we want to have some more adjustment in this thing so we're going to be making some changes to a lot of stuff today did get this reservoir taken off. You can see here's the end cap, the IFP, the internal floating piston that goes inside of it. And then this is the reservoir. And you can see down in there, the very bottom 
there is a, a shim stack down there and that is for this compression adjuster. So I'll break this off in a second, but what I'm gonna do now is get this valve body apart and then kind of lay everything out so you guys can see what actually goes into these shocks. All right, so here we go. This is everything laid out. So the nut is on the very top. We have that little washer. This is your rebound stack that sits on top of the piston. And then below the piston on the opposite side when the piston is sitting on the shaft, you have your compression stack. And then underneath that, you have a little washer that goes in between. And then you have your rebound stack that goes on top again. This will sit upside down just like that inside of this little piston. And then you also have your compression stack. So the way this works is on the shaft, you can see right here, it's hollow in the top, like I was saying, and there's a hole right here. What this does is the piston for your main valving that you're usually using will sit right over this hole and you have your compression stack on the bottom and your rebound stack on the top. And then when that needle comes down, and goes into the shaft, once it's getting close to completely compressed, the, sh the needle will come down in here and close this hole off, and then that makes your bump stop valving come into place. So it'll sh close this off completely so this piston's not doing anything once it's the needle's in there. And then that's when your bump zone comes in, and that's what all this valving right here is for. So the benefit of having something like this is you have two basically two shocks in one. It's acting as a bump stop um, instead of running like an external bump stop, even though we are running one. This just has an extra little bump in it. So when it completely compresses, it's getting close to full compression, it'll stiffen up and you can, uh, you can tune that by these shim stacks. So what we're gonna do is, since this is the main piston right here, this is what we're usually running on. We're gonna spec this out see what uh, we're running right now. And then we're also gonna spec out the bump stop piston just to see what it has. And then we'll make adjustments to that. One thing to note too, so specking stuff out, when I, when I say that, that just means I'm measuring the diameter and the thickness of each shim. So you'll need a set of calipers to be able to do that. And then you can see right here, we have drawers just full of different diameters and different thickness shims. So typically for a King Shock, You'll have a 8 thousandths thickness shim. You'll have a 10 thousandths, a 12 thousandths, a 15 thousandths, and a 20 thousandths shim that will go in these shocks. And you can adjust the thickness to um, compensate for different ride characteristics and to get things to work the way you want them to. So I've already noticed on the main piston right here, on the compression side, there is a flutter inside of here. So what that's doing is basically spreading these two shims apart to make the ride a little bit softer which that will probably end up getting removed um, because it just makes everything super soft and we don't really need that. So I'm gonna go ahead, write everything down right now and then show you guys what's in these. Yeah, so I spec'd everything out right here. Got all this written down and there was a flutter on the main piston side on the compression. So it's all 12s and then it's got that flutter in there. And then the compression side, it was on the bump stop, it was all 15s and the rebound side was all eight. Like when we were watching it, that it blows too fast from when it transitions from the red piston mm -hmm. to the bump piston. Yep. So it's almost like you would need to, you like maybe leave this initial alone, but you're gonna have to bring it in like fast right here. Yeah, cause like I was saying, like you couldn't, <laughs> in the truck, you can't feel that bump zone come in. Like it feels like I know it just you slams said that, through it. And you said that and, and that's what I mean. When you watch the video and the tires just flopping all around, yep. which is cool that it's moving a lot, but it's moving through it so fast. Yeah, that's the thing. It just literally <laughs> blows right through it. It goes through it just way too fast. <clears throat> I'd leave the rebound alone though. Yep. Because you want it to drop out when it's fully compressed and it catches that needle. When it catches that needle, what's that needle look like? It's six inches long. Yeah, if you were to start bringing it in, let's just see here. And we went to 20s, you leave the rebound alone. This stays a 12, something under here? Oh, tape. <laughs> this stays a 12, this stays, but then we start this stack. But we started it to 1.75, pivot off of that, and then leave this 1.102, or 1.0, and just go all 15s. And then I would slow all of this down to 10s. So the initial because will be from that with eights, just let, bring it out 
and then it'll drop into the. Tube. Yeah, but you have to think about it when it's in this bump piston, because look at the where's the bump piston? Right here. Because look at the, oh, yeah. the bump piston. Yeah. Yeah. See, so when everything flows through and it exits, it exits, and then when it comes back, see how see how the the difference in the flow? Oh yeah. See that? Obviously, the compression stack goes here, rebound stack goes here, but yeah, that's when you, look at, when you look at the compression side of the piston. Which is the rebound side. Right, and that's where everybody gets that's Yeah. What's so <laughs> that's what's so funny. Because you have to picture when the shock is moving and the fluid's flowing through the port and then it's exiting. And then you have to think vice versa. So when it's rebounding, it's flowing through the port, but then it's exiting into the stack. So there, there's a lot to take in. Yep. See, and then you start playing with these too. Oh, there's the plate right there. Yeah, because it's got it's got bleeds in the the plate in too the on plate. the rebound side. Right, <laughs> but the bleeds are open, right? Yes. Yeah. So you can play with that. You can play with those plates because you start putting holes in those plates and it opens. Oh yeah. Right but we need we need to slow it down. I think it's it, I think it's I think it's only a touch too floppy on rebound <coughs> at ride height, but it's blowing through it too much entirely. Because what I would rather you do is to have add, add more valving, but then have you not have the adjuster all the way closed, obviously, but... Yeah, somewhere in the middle could, ground. Not even middle. I would probably have it closer to being more open so that you have all of that adjustment to tighten it up. But then when you put the 20s in the adjuster, you that those clicks are going to be more, more definite. Yeah, more progressive. Right. Just a touch more. And even if you got haired out about putting 20s, you always put 18s in it if you want to go middle ground. But I would put 20s because you're you're making a valving change, so there's more force in there. Mm -hmm. and then you're going to bump the psi and nitrogen, so there's 200 psi, so there's more force there. 20s, so all these pressures will equalize. And That's we, what I think too. And then we put Jam 92 in it because it's it's hot. So that you, little secret right there, little Jam 92 action. Well, yeah, because that it. It's not a mineral base. Well, it's mineral base, <laughs> but it's also somewhat probably since it's more synthetic probably than anything. But tight. Well, we got a lot of a lot of adjustment right there. Change some stuff around. How you doing, bud? We'll be able to make some moves. Hopefully, this will make the front of the truck ride a lot better. It's going to. I already know. I can already tell just by stiffening everything up on the main side and then stiffening stiffening up the bump stop zone too. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start changing some of this stuff out, making the changes to the stacks and then getting this stuff back together. So I went ahead and got all the shim stacks pulled for what we need to be making changes to and got these all set up and ready to go. Now I got the adjuster back together already with the changes that we made. So we went from a 15 stack in the adjuster to a 20 stack. So that's on there. I got this nut uh, torqued down to spec with a little bit of Loctite on it. Went ahead and put some grease on the seals before I put it back together. And then a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the threads. So when I thread this reservoir back on, right here, everything goes together nice and smooth. And then I can get that uh, tightened down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this back on right now and then start putting together the valve body. And I'll show you guys how that goes back together because there is a couple little screws that hold the stacks on. It's kind of different from a normal coilover. So We'll go ahead and show you guys how that works, but this is something that you don't normally see right here. Normally people don't know what the adjuster actually is doing. So there is a shim stack in there. You got all your bleeds and ports that the oil flows through. And this is what controls the adjuster inside of there. And then when you make the adjustments with the knob, you turn it in and tighten it or loosen it. It'll actually change the way that the shock performs and it'll go through the shim stacks more or less depending on how open or closed you have the adjuster. Reservoir is back together, got this nice and tight. And to tighten that down because there's nothing to really grab onto on this reservoir is we use a strap wrench right here, the rag around it, grab the cylinder with the strap wrench and then just give her a nice little snug uh, turn on there and then that's good to go. So now I can go ahead and start getting this valve body back together. So the first thing is gonna be the main piston valving. So this is the stack that we made the changes to right here. I'm going to go ahead, get this on the shaft. And with this main 
uh, piston valving right here, you can see this little hole right below where the oil flows through for the needle and all that. There is this tiny little set screw that holds this stack on. Get that guy in, that holds the stack down. So we'll go ahead, get this tightened up. Get it nice and snug. There's no torque spec for this right here, so I just go by feel. So that's on there good. Now we can go ahead and get this piston on here and you can see there is a slot right there in the center where that goes over the shaft and that lines up with this little set screw so that will hold that in and lock it down and then we can go ahead and get our rebound side of the stack on and what's kind of different about the red piston that's what they call this the main piston is the rebound stack actually goes upside down in the shock and the reason for that is because it's pulling vacuum through that hole once the shaft or the needle starts to go back out through the shaft, it's pulling a vacuum on it. So you run your valving stack upside down compared to normal in there. That will sit just like that. You got your little washer right here. That spaces both the main piston and then the bump stop piston valving out. And then we'll go ahead and grab our compression stack. You can see the shims go from smallest to biggest. That will face down. So the biggest shim is touching the piston. Go ahead, grab our piston. You can usually tell uh, the differences between each side just by the way that the bleeds are. So right here, there's one tiny little hole that you can see that's a bleed for the piston. So that typically goes up and that's how you know that's the uh, top side of the piston. So that will sit just like that. With all your valving sitting right down inside of there. And then we can go ahead and grab our rebound stack for this bump stop. And you can tell on the main piston, I put that valving, the rebound valving stack upside down like this. On the main piston and typically in a normal coilover, you will put the valve stack just like this with the smallest shim at the top side. That will sit up there just like that. And then we have our nut and we have our washers that take up, you can see at the top of the the shaft right there, there is a basically space where um, they leave a little bit extra room. So that way when you're changing your valving and you go to a thicker stack or whatever, um, this will take up that slack. So you can set this right on there and you can see that gives us the perfect amount to be able to get the threads started for our nut. Um, the reason you torque this nut is because it's putting preload on all these shims and it basically sets where everything sits at. But this is ready to go. You can go ahead and get this reservoir put back together. So the way this works is the internal floating piston will sit inside of your reservoir inside of here and it'll basically be sitting all the way back here when the shock is fully extended. It'll basically be bottomed out and this whole reservoir will be filled with nitrogen. And then when the shock goes to compress, this internal floating piston will start to move with the shock shaft and depending on where it's at in the travel, it will be moving through here, letting the oil come into here, and it will be bypassing through that adjuster. So you'll get the dampening there. And then once it comes into here, it'll sit in here and it'll start to cool off with the fins from the reservoir and cool the oil off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this internal piston uh, back into the shock, get this uh, reservoir back on here, and then before I go ahead and put the end cap on, I need to cycle this IFP inside of the reservoir once I fill this up with oil to be able to get all the bubbles and stuff out of the hose and out of the shock itself because you do not want bubbles or air in your shock um, when it's all together because it will not function properly. So we got the reservoir assembly back on the shock, got some oil in it, and now what Sonny's doing is just cycling the IFP like I was saying to be able to get all the air out of the shock. And you can see, just looking at the oil, you can see all the bubbles on the top side of the oil, and that's all coming up through the hose. So once we cycle it, and you can feel it by hand, the air, there's no more air inside of there. Uh, what we'll do is we'll get the end cap back on it, and then we'll put the whole valve assembly back in here, cycle that a couple times as well, and then that way we know all the, the uh, air is out of the oil. And then when you go ahead and put the end cap on, you'll charge the shock with nitrogen before you start cycling the valve body in the shock so that you're not pushing the IFP and getting a false oil reading.
Yeah, because the, the depth of the IFP is very important to the way that the shock is working. So you wanna make sure that that stays exactly where you want it while you're doing everything with the shock and when you're putting it back together. So we got the reservoir charged. And what we're doing now is just getting the last of the air out of there by cycling the valve body and letting all the oil pass by, I guess both the pistons, right? Yeah. In this case. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need it to pass by everything. You can hear that, you can see the little bubbles forming down in there. That's just everything passing by the piston. Yeah, see, so come here real quick, watch. Yeah, you can see all the bubbles down we'll there. We'll see the fluids being displaced and watch the bubbles. You can see the bubbles right there. <coughs> so that's just leftover uh, air that's stuck inside of the shock, whether it be now going into that needle. Just hit the needle. Yep, going it's into the needle it. or stuck in the adjuster down in the hose. But this is just a surefire way to get all the air out of the shock. Yeah, see now you feel the needle, the valve body just got shut down. It just got stiff real got? stiff. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually not that bad though. Because <coughs> you got to figure it's only, what, last three inches? Yep. Three or four inches of stroke. Yeah, because by the time it gets down to like the solid part of that yeah, so you needle. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel the, feel the little air bubbles coming out now. So what you're saying is, is we're going to have a bump zone now. <laughs> so now at this point, after we cycle it a couple times, we'll be able to set the oil level where it needs to be inside of the shock. We'll get the snap ring put in there and then we'll wipe everything down inside of there, make sure it's all nice and clean, get that dust cap back on there, and then this thing will be ready to get charged and ready to be put back on the car. Now that the oil level is set, need to go in here and get all this residual oil on top of the seal head where the snap ring sits out of there or else your shock's going to be seeping. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with a rag real quick, get all that out of there, get the snap ring back in it and then charge or compress the shaft, charge the shock and then this little set screw right here, you open that up once the shock's charged and that will let the last little bit of the air inside of the shock out and then you can go ahead and get your dust cap on there and tighten down and then this shock is ready to go. Well, we got these things all back together, got them in the spring compressor and got the lower springs back on them and the spring plates. So these are 100% ready to go back on the truck now. So what we're gonna do is head back home and get these things on the truck. Hopefully be able to go test them, probably for Thanksgiving. And then we'll see how they do. Getting ready to get these things back on the truck right now. What do you think of this whole process of uh, shock tuning? Well. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with um, the amount of preciseness and how clean down south motorsports their their uh, room is where they actually do their shock prep. Um, I come from a construction background, and I hate when things get sloppy. But they, you know, they tend to get sloppy. These guys keep everything clean. Um, I've never been on that side of the off-road industry. I usually am just somebody who purchases stuff. So to be able to go in there with my son who's working with Sonny um, and actually see um, how what, what is actually involved in rebuilding one of these, sho these shocks is um, it's pretty incredible. And I just I give Sonny a lot of props for you know his, the work that he's done in the industry, as well as my son who's working for him, who's learning a lot. So, I don't know, I was just really impressed. Yeah, so if you guys ever need anything done as far as shock service or sales, if you're trying to buy a set of shocks, um, we do everything at Down South Motorsports. Sonny will get you set up, as well as all the boys in the office. So if you guys have any questions regarding anything shock-wise, uh, make sure to hit us up. And uh, I'm the one in the back doing all the service work typically, so I will be working on your shocks more than likely too, so that's pretty cool. The main thing for this video is more so just to show you guys how these shocks actually work internally. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something from that. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.